Hi, my name is Sammy Roenick, and I am a retired sports documentarian. So it's 2013, I just graduated film school. I get an internship at ESPN Films. I do a lot of uncredited PA work on the 30 for 30 series. Uh, I, I was hungry for my, uh, for my big break. I wanted to make the next classic sports documentary. But when you're starting out, it, it's hard. It's hard to get noticed. So it's New Year's Eve 2013. I'm watching the Bulls Raptors game. At the end of the game, the camera is following Kyle Lowry off the court and we see him take off his shoes and he's going to throw them to a fan. Uh, the fan has his arms uh, stretched out to catch him. But what happens? Another fan sneaks up beside him and takes both shoes. In that moment, I felt like I was hit with a bolt of lightning because I saw my entire documentary unfold right before my eyes. Because when he didn't get those shoes, I saw the entirety of the fan experience. I saw the high hopes and the dashed dreams. A few hours later, I find that clip on YouTube and one of the commenters says he knows that fan. So I message him. I find out that fan is Alan Vale from Toronto, Canada. I get his contact information, I email him, I say I'm from ESPN Films, I pitch him my idea, he's a little baffled, but he's sold on it. It's showtime. You know, legend goes that uh, Steven Spielberg used to sneak onto the Universal lot before he got started, so I figure a, a little rule breaking would be okay for my origin story. <laughs> So it's January 2nd, 2014. I'm in Toronto and I meet up with Alan. We go to his place, I set up my lights and my camera, and we begin our interview. Well, he started to toss the shoes and there's a Bulls fan, I guess, there, and he caught the shoes, got the first one, then caught the second one, and well, that was about it. He caught him, he got him. After 20 minutes, I realize I might have f***ed myself. I bet all my chips on this guy having this story of bitterness and frustration and anger. He just laughed off the moment. He thought nothing of it. What would you say to that fan that snatched away those shoes and thus your dreams? I guess I would tell him, you know, nice reflexes. It's a pretty good catch and hope you enjoy the shoes. It a real chipper, good perspective on life. <clears throat> I had a documentary with no drama. So I did what any good documentarian would do. Pretentious camera angles and leading questions. Would you say this was your defining moment as both a fan and perhaps as a human being? Nope. Surely you must now despise the city of Chicago. Chicago is a great city. I had a wonderful time. I can't wait to go back. Certainly you'll be driven to a life of squalor bitterness and vengeance. Definitely not. Where's this coming from? This is a bit much, okay? This is a little pretentious, this shot. I didn't get what I came for, but uh, you know, it was a good experience. Uh, uh, I really liked Alan. I think that we had a good filmmaking chemistry and I like to think we developed a really nice bond. Sammy Roenick? Yeah, I remember that guy. He was a total hack. He begged me to sleep on my couch for three nights in a row. All he did when he was here was eat my raisin bran. Like, hand in the box, no milk, spilling everywhere. It was disgusting. So I returned to ESPN Films. I beg them not to call the cops. And I show them the rough cut for out of reach, the plight of the fan. Yeah, they fired me right on the spot. Looking back, I, I think a more poignant story was told somehow, because not all true stories have satisfying conclusions. That's life. Life is mundane. Life is ordinary. 
Life doesn't always come down to a final second jump shot and a leap in the air to win the game. So just like those shoes were out of reach for Alan, that classic documentary was out of reach for me. What the fu-